it takes a substantial investment in these animals themselves, you have a lot of capital tied up. So the three things that you have to line up, you have to have the cattle be healthy, the market has to be in your favor, and you have to have adequate growth of your pastures to be able to support them. My name is Jeff Mamet. We're in the village of Newland. We run a stalker operation. We buy calves in the spring. We feed them primarily on grass and we sell them as heavy feeders in the fall. The kind of cattle we buy are primarily Angus, Angus Cross. Uh, you'll see a few other colors out there, but they're primarily Angus Cross. Medium frame, well muscled, typically top end cattle. So we were looking for an option that would enable us to efficiently and effectively renovate these pastures and still have the system run. We wanted the animals to be able to continually graze that system while this was going on. I wanted a cool season grass that was going to be high yielding and that was going to have superior warm season growth. So that's what caused me to settle on orchard grass being the prime species for this operation. I knew I needed a legume in the mix as well. I went and I no-tilled alfalfa into the system and that's been pretty much the mix that we've stayed with now for 15 out of the last 20 years. And it seems to come back pretty well without having to actually shut down uh, a field or a section for a year and start from scratch. I set up the system with enough paddocks that I would be able to have about a four to five day grazing period on a cell or on a paddock. So I set up 11 paddocks, which would give me about a 40 day rest period till I was back to the first one. Normally after the first grazing, I'll go through and clip the pasture after they're off of it. And the reason I do that is because, of course, they like some patches better than others. You have high spots, you have low spots, and that growth that's left, or those stems that are left, tend to get tough. And after that point, they're not going to graze that particular piece down any further. So if I clip it that one time, it seems that I can reestablish a uniform height. So the next time they're back in, the vegetative state is more uniform in height and they graze it much more uniformly. We don't let them graze it down below four or five inches. And when I clip it, I clip it to a height of about five to six because I want enough vegetative growth there so that I'm not depleting the root reserves so I get the regrowth that I'm after. We're bringing in high health status calves. I buy my cattle single source. We'll let the cattle rest for at least two days. We'll let them fill up on water, fill up on grass. We'll let them find out where they're at. We'll let them get acquainted with the fences, get acquainted with the pasture because we don't want to process cattle while they're stressed. After they've had their chance to rest, they're ear tagged with insecticide ear tags for fly control, and that also helps with pink eye control. They're given an internasal vaccine for IBR. They're wormed with a long-acting wormer that not only cleans them out, but continues to act as they graze, and as they pick up those larvae off the, the forage, it kills those larvae. So in a sense, it helps us keep our pastures cleaner with regard to a parasite load. If you think about it, if you're trying to vaccinate an animal and get an immune response to an animal that has a stressed immune system, you're not gonna get a very good response. So we feel that by letting them chill, so to speak, for the first 48 hours enables them to do that and we can do it in a much less stressful environment. You have a lot of money wrapped up in a perishable commodity and you have to be able to ask yourself what would happen in the worst case scenario. My advice, if you're going to get in this business, you definitely need to have a grazing plan. If you don't know how to develop one, you need to go to the folks who can advise you, the NRCS, your county agent, to fully develop this plan so that when you're trying to graze your cattle, you don't run into a situation where you're mid-season and all of a sudden you've got nothing left to feed them. Work with your local veterinarian. They can educate you, they can help you, they can help devise the proper receiving program for your operation. 
and your system, the way you handle cattle, the class of cattle, they can also help educate you in terms of learning what's normal, abnormal, and what to do about it. Fencing is critical. Don't skimp on fencing. Don't skimp on handling facilities. It's something that you're going to have for the lifetime of your business. It's something that's going to keep your cattle safe, and it's something that's going to enable you to do the things that you need to do to your cattle in not only a safe way, but an efficient way. I would not advise anybody to go into this business until they've really become thoroughly knowledgeable about cattle and cattle behavior. You have to know how everything is going to work from beginning to end, from the marketing, from the finance, from the health side, from the grazing side, the harvest side, the fencing, the health. You have to have that a total business plan that includes all that from the very beginning.